شاقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد وانتشت روحي وصارت دمع يجري يا إلهي خذ بقلبي للرشاد إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مذل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيب يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, has revealed the Qur'an as the final revelation to mankind. There's been a lot of revelations that came before. And as the Prophet sallallahu said, that my example is like that of the house that was perfected, this beautiful house, and there was that last missing stone, and I am that. The Prophet ﷺ is the last messenger to bring a new sharia. The last messenger that came to mankind with the message. As we know, Isa salam who come back but to be a follower of the sharia of the Prophet ﷺ, of Islam. However, a lot of people, they look at them, they say, well, that's 1400 plus years ago. And now we're living in the 21st century. And we are faced with so many different issues and new issues. And when we look in the history of religion, we find that human beings, you know, we always look at the wrong direction. We always take, we look at the wrong aspect of life. Instead of changing ourselves, we're always trying to change, subhanAllah, what Allah is revealing to us. And there's been always many calls for reformations before, as we know, the Ahl Kitab have gone through it. And people have always asked the question, well, what about Islam? When is, you know, when is your time? Aren't you guys gonna step in line with everyone else? And what people don't understand, that Islam, as it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ, it came as a complete way of life that encompasses every single thing that we do in our life, including the way we do our business, including the way we deal with our families, including how we plan infrastructure and everything, we can find this in Islam. We find sometimes in the life of the Sahabas and the Tabi'een, that some people came to some of the Sahabas and said, you are telling us that this is haram, or this is not allowed, or do this. But we don't find it in the Qur'an. Basically what they're looking for is like, let it be written in the Qur'an that this, you know, and this, and this, and this, and everything. 
PlayStation or something like that, you know, subhanAllah, right? Oh, if, if we don't find it, it's, it's either, you know, it's whatever we think it is. And that's not correct, because Islam is the way of life, as I said, prescribed by Allah for all times. It is universal principle that does not stand still in the light of time. You know, it's not affected that, okay, things are changing, khalas, we are stuck in a corner, we can't do anything. No. There's no such thing as being outdated, as people say. You know, you guys need to upgrade. It's not. It's not some kind of platform that needs upgrading. And you might say, okay, so what do we do? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed all the necessary tools for the ummah to be able to move forward and deal with any situation that they will arise. And for example, the principle of ishtihad is a principle of Islam that protects the ummah from stagnation. And you might say, well, that's interesting. Where do you get that from? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he sent Mu'ad to Yemen, he advised him with some really interesting advice. And I advise you to go and seek this and look at this advice. Do a little bit of research when you go home. But then he asked him, what if a case is brought to you to settle? If something comes up, some people have an issue. What will you do? How you make your judgment? He Mu'ad radiallahu anh said, I will decide based on the decree or the decrees in the book of Allah, in the Qur'an. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, what if you cannot find it? Ah, that's interesting. What if you cannot find it? What if PlayStation is not written in the Qur'an? What if marijuana is not written in the Qur'an? What will you do? Of course he didn't say that, but I'm giving an example. What if you cannot find that principle or that issue? He said, I will decide based on the sunnah, based on what you have said, Ya Rasulullah, based on what you have done, Ya Rasulullah, based on what you have accepted or you have kept quiet about, Ya Rasulullah, or based on the sifat that you had, Ya Rasulullah, the sunnah. I will decide based on that, on your way. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, what if you cannot find it? What if you cannot find this in the sunnah? He said, I will make ishtihad. I will use my reasoning. I will look at things. And based on the principles that I have learned from the Qur'an and the sunnah, I will make a ruling based on that. We find that through the life of the sahaba, that that has happened. And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, praise be to Allah. This is reported by Ibn Sa'ad, the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, and Ibn Kathir. So we see that our ulama have always used this principle. And the, the ummah was never faced with this, you know, science versus religion, or you know, we're stuck, we can't develop, we can't progress. And, and that is why Islam was the pearl of the world. Was the pearl of the world. And I'm gonna talk about why I'm saying was in the past, in a bit. Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, إن الله يبعث لهذه الأمة على رأس كل مئة سنة من يجدد لها دينها. Again, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Very Allah will send for this nation at the head of every century, hundred years or generation, one who would revive this deen. يجدد will renew it. Pay attention though, not change it." will renew the sunnah, will bring back the principles of Islam, those universal principles. And not to say that, you know, ah, Islam is you know old and we need to look in other where or elsewhere for guidance. No. It will renew those principles that the Prophet ﷺ taught us. So we can move forward. Because sometimes, because of our own ignorance, we cover those principles and we tend to abstain from progressing and developing. And this hadith is reported by Abu Huraira, collected by Abu Dawood and Hakim. So we establish, these are just a few proofs, that we establish that Islam, despite all the ignorant critics who say that, you know, it needs renewal, it needs to go through, you know, uh, reformation, it needs to change, has all it needs 
does not need any update. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given all the principles we need. In some cases very specific, in some cases very, very general. So that us, we can move left or right and there is certain leeway. Because Islam is for all times. So, but the issue here brothers, is not really for any Muslim who has knowledge of Islam. Whenever someone is saying, you know, that Islam is backwards, doesn't allow progression, I mean, it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. Let's look around us, look at our history, then we will find that this is easily refuted. But the issue again is not whether Islam is compatible with the 21st century. People are asking that, is Islam comparable in the 21st century? That's not the question. The question is, whether our actions in the 21st century are compatible with Islam. This is the real question. Are what we do, is that compatible with Islam? Whether it's development and so on. Is it in line with Islam? Islam does not discourage, actually it encourages development. It encourages. And subhanAllah, when we look into the lives of the Sahaba, if you look into the lives of the Muslim scholars, why were they flourishing? Why were they performing so well? None of them would say, well, I feel, you know, I'm very motivated. My father was a very good man. He was a doctor. I want to be a doctor. It was because of the book of Allah. Because they would study and they would find inspiration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calling them to go forward. So Islam glorifies strength and progression. It does. The Prophet ﷺ said, الْمُؤْمِنُ قَوِيُّ خَيْرُ وَأَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنُ ضَعِيفِ وَفِي كُلٍ خَيْرٍ That the believer, the strong believer, is better and more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the believer that is weaker. But in both of them there is khair. There is good in both of them. Now, strength of what? Well, it's strength of body, strength of character. Material strength, but at the same time, strength of Iman. And probably that's first before anything. Strength of Iman, strength of soul, strength of character, of morality. Because if that strength does not come, if that balance is not there, then what's the point? And that is the key and the secret of the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam. That Allah says that He has made us a ummah of the middle path, ummah to wasata. We are a ummah that is in balance. They put the spirit and the materialist, everything is in, is in balance. Because what is the point of building if we fail to build our people? What is the point of building masajid if we don't pray in them? If we don't pray fajr? Where are the musalleen? Having said that, we are a nation of progress. We are a nation that moves forward. And we've always been. Islam encourages us to explore and benefit everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in many ayat, but an example, Allah is telling us, look what's in the heavens and the earth. Look, explore, learn, seek. Not just to look, to see the grandeur. To see the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To increase your iman. And based on that, to take lessons and bring it back to your nation, to your people, to your community, and do something for them. Do something good to benefit them. To build, to move forward. To deal with those situations that arise as we are a dynamic society. And to solve them. To bring khair to the people. As the Prophet used to tell us in many hadith, that the Muslim is the one who benefits the people. The real Muslim, the real believer, is the one who brings benefit. And having said that, we cannot just always look at the past. No doubt, we look at the past. It's very important. Don't misunderstand me. But a lot of us sometimes, we keep saying, well, our scholars and our people, and in this place and in that place, Al-Andalus, we keep talking about things that happen. Those people seal their deeds according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed them. It's up to us now what we do. It's our test, it's our turn to prove ourselves as to how we carry this deen and how we progress and how we develop 
our nation, our countries, our ummah. And that's why we must ask ourselves, where are we today? No doubt, alhamdulillah, that there's a lot of progression happening. I met someone yesterday who is one of the very few companies in the world that is basically endorsed by NASA as a space you know, type of company. And it's a Muslim company that make a Muslim prayer mat that is basically helps people with bad knees and bad posture and so on. People who are had hard try, you know, the time making sujood and so on. And it was amazing that it's one of the, you know, I think it was 43 companies in the world that only have this endorsement from, uh, from NASA and they've been recognized. Subhanallah, you know, something amazing. But again, the question is, where are more of those? Where are our noble prices? Where are the inventions and innovations? There are some, but no doubt we're still in the passenger seat. And we need to bring back that glory that we used to have, that we keep looking back for, uh, for at, and we need it to be original. We need to come up with it. Why do we always wait for others to do it for us? And at the same time, we need to keep the limits. Because if we don't keep the limits, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah says, okay, if you want to do something, do it with ihsan. Do it with perfection. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected it for you. But do not spread what? Fasad on the earth. Don't let fasad spread. You, we are progressing, alhamdulillah. Allah has given us, be careful. If you don't keep the limits, fasad will spread. Science is good. Development is good. It's important. But some people start playing, a'udhu billah, God now. And start doing all kinds of things without any limits. And by this, they are spreading fasad. They are hurting humanity. They are hurting innocent people. They are hurting people who are, you know, have nothing to do with anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us, do not spread fasad on the earth. How? By doing ihsan. Ahsin kama ahsan Allah has made Islam for you. He has blessed you to be a Muslim. He's given you Islam. Make ihsan to the people. Bring benefit to the people. And a beautiful example is that of Yusuf alayhi salam, our Prophet Yusuf, and his role in that, in the court of the king, when he came up with the amazing idea that benefited that nation at that time, subhanAllah. He was working with people who were not at the same belief as him. But he brought benefit to his dream. And of course he was a prophet. And of course his da'wah spread from there. He wasn't stagnant. He spread. But subhanAllah, that amazing contribution is what opened a lot of doors for him. And the stories of the previous nations, brothers and sisters, the story of our forefathers, the story of the people of Baghdad, and Andalus that flourished, but again, their fall was due to what? To the loss of the balance. Because they became too involved in it. And they lost track of the other side of it, which is the spirituality, the taqwa, and the ihsan. They got overtaken by the development, and they lost because of that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those, الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen, to the speech and they follow what is best aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah wali wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu al-ghafur rahim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, as-salatu as-salamu rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your brothers, if you can move a bit forward, there are some brothers outside, you can probably fit in, inshallah. I remind myself and my brothers about the, the adab of the khutbah, that the khutbah is part of the prayer, of the Friday prayer. And we should always try to fill in the gaps, get closer to each other, inshallah. Pay attention, not speak during the khutbah. Uh, try to wear our best clothes for Friday. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us uh, in the Quran, to take the best of our clothes when we go to the masjid. And pay attention, inshallah, and try to apply the lessons that we learn, inshallah. I want to end up with this very important point, which is I would call this like the golden rule of development. And it is very easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَعَاوَنُ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Okay? Move forward, contribute, cooperate, help each other. But in what? In bir and taqwa. When we are developing, when we are doing whatever it is, our jobs, with ihsan, with perfection, the best worker in the office should be you, the Muslim, the best citizen, the best person who abides by the laws and so on, the Muslim, the one who doesn't cheat, who doesn't steal, who doesn't do tricks, is the Muslim. The one who progresses, the one who brings benefits. But all these benefits and progressions should be done for what? With bir and taqwa, righteousness, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not these developments, where are they going? This is the golden rule that we need to take care of. This is what the Prophet ﷺ used to apply. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encouraged us to do and has enjoyed upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and to move towards these type of sifat, these attributes of the Muslim as he is like the rain and he benefits people wherever he falls as he is the one who brings khair to wherever he goes and he is the one that people go for help wherever he is. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our example, our qudwa who is the one, our role model that we follow in our daily life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا Mm-hmm.